Hi, everyone. Welcome to the Graphic Novel Showcase. Um, I am Bethany Bach, Editor-in-Chief of Pixel and Inc., and I'm so thrilled to have these three great uh, uh, creators of middle-grade graphic novels. They are not only our, um, our first three graphic novel launches of the imprint, um, they're all around the same time, they're all series, and they're all really fantastic. So I'm so excited for you guys to, for everyone here to, to meet them. We will start with Zach Smith. Why don't you tell us a little bit about yourself and your, uh, your series? Uh, yeah, hi, thanks. Um, I'm Zach Smith. I'm the author of Dolphin Girl, uh, Trouble in Pizza Paradise, which is a new uh, graphic novel series that will be coming, well, it's already out, but um, it's basically uh, it sort of revolves around this superhero uh, named Dolphin Girl who runs a, a pizza restaurant similar to Chuck E. Cheese with her dad, who is also a superhero, but they're also the mascots of this Chuck E. Cheese style restaurant called Pizza Paradise. Um, it's a little bit location wise based on where I grew up in the suburbs of Detroit in the Rust Belt. Um, I moved away and now I work in uh, animation industry doing storyboards. Um, but yeah, this is my first time doing a graphic novel and it was super exciting to do it. Great, thanks. Uh, Richard Fairgray. Hi, I'm Richard Fairgray. I'm the author and artist on Black Sand Beach, uh, my new graphic novel series. Uh, this is the first book, it's out now. It's called, Are You Afraid, Are you Afraid of the Light? It, uh, it follows the adventures of four uh, kids who are spending the summer at an incredibly haunted beach where literally a dimension of darkness is slowly oozing its way through the sand and corrupting and mutating everything that would be normal. Um, it's loosely based on my own childhood when I spent a lot of my summers at a haunted lighthouse in New Zealand, uh, but I've kind of amped it up and uh, increased the amount of terrifying things going on so it isn't just me seeing ghosts over and over again. Fantastic. And David Fremont. Hello, I'm David Fremont, and I'm the creator of Carlton Crumple Creature Catcher, Catch the Munchies. This is book one in the series. Um, the first book <clears throat> is about a little kid named Carlton Crumple, and um, his older brother, Milt, scares him a lot. So he is always running around the house ter terrorizing him with, like, you know, masks of monsters and um, setting traps for him. And it's inspired by my childhood and my older brother who used to scare me a lot because we used to watch these monster movies and vampire stuff and like witch, a lot of witches, a lot of, a lot of witches. And so there was this witch that he would always terrorize me with called Hester. And he would close the door and be like, have a nice time with Hester. Hester's in the book. I never heard this story. <laughs> yeah, so I forgot to talk about it last time, but um, so um, so yeah, so he thinks monsters are real, and um, so he wants to become this creature catcher. Well, jump forward a little bit when he gets this, uh, he gets a, a job at a fast food place, so a work program kind of thing for uh, younger kids, and um, and down at the other end of the town there's a lake and some little kid throws a french fry into the water and sinks down to the bottom and these sea creatures well they're lake creatures eat the french fry and they love it and they want more they want more fast food so they jump out of the lake they hop in a hippie van and they drive down the road looking for more fast food and guess the first place they go is chubsy cheeseburgers where carlton works so off they go on the adventure chasing the monsters down the freeway with he, with his friend um, Lulu. They jump on the scooter and they have these two little animals named Poof Poof and Iggy, which is a, do a poodle and a iguana. And so the chase begins in book one. And a little bit about me: I'm uh, I work in I've worked in animation for years um, and made comics and worked as an editorial illustrator and also did rock posters um, for bands like Beck and Smashing Pumpkins. No. So I kind of did, did a lot of things um, in San Francisco. And now I live in LA and I've worked at Nickelodeon and um, developed things for Cartoon Network and online cartoons for DreamWorks TV uh, called Public Pool. And um, yeah, now I'm super excited to be doing um, books. Cart uh, graphic novels. Fantastic. Thanks, everybody.
Um, so I'm gonna ask you a fun, easy question to start off. Uh, do you remember the first comic you wrote? I will start with Richard. Yes, because it was the first comic I published. Um, when I was a kid, <laughs> well, I, I, I grew up in New Zealand um, and there are only, I think four comic book stores in the entire country. So as a kid, I just never even seen a comic. And so I firmly believed that I, I knew they existed because I'd seen them on TV, but I thought that if I could make my own ones, then I'd probably make like a million dollars. And so uh, I had a little bit of blackmail going on with my uh, school librarian to get free photocopying. And so I wrote this book called Ghost Ghost about a ghost who struggled with invisibility and loneliness, uh, who couldn't scare anyone because no one could see him. And so I, uh, it's a little eight page book and I made it and I printed 200 copies and took it to a school athletics day, which I was not taking part in. And I sat at the side and like, I, I think mostly parents took pity on me and bought my book. Um, but I made a pile of money and bought a pile of Power Rangers toys and was like, I'm going to do this forever because I really like Power Rangers toys. The only thing that's changed is I no longer like Power Rangers toys. I could be really distracted by that, by that answer <laughs> about what you spend your money on right now. <laughs> <laughs> Hang on, I just, I, I'm staying with a friend of mine at the moment, and I literally just gave her a full, there are now 10 ghost ghosts, but that's the first uh, one I made back when I was oh, seven. Cool. And it's, Wait, I don't the, want to get sidetracked, Richard, but doesn't that ghost... ghost in the world? This is ghost ghost, but if you could see him, he'd look like this. Uh, um, is there an inside story we should know about ghost ghost and uh, maybe a, something that one of your characters wears in Black Sand Beach? Oh. Yeah, um, so uh, the main character, Dash, on Black Sand Beach, he has a t-shirt with a really poorly drawn Dalmatian nose on it that looks suspiciously like Ghost Ghost. Oh, that's cool. <laughs> that's cool. Thank you. Um, Zach, how about you? What was your, what was your first comic? Uh, I Let think us all in. I'm trying to remember, but I do think that I had a, uh, one of my first comics I made, I used to make comic books on like computer paper um and it was kind of like the captain dugong character that's in this the, it's dolphin girl's dad where it's like this like kind of slothful character that doesn't um actually want to fight any crime but is a superhero <laughs> just wants to like hang out and eat snacks and stuff um i can't remember the name of it i also would draw uh and get in trouble a lot for drawing comics about like my teachers my science teacher and stuff i remember um yeah, just, I don't know, science teachers lighting farts with Bunsen burners and things like that. <laughs> That's um, awesome. The Bunsen burner was invented. Yeah. Well, maybe they're listening in. Yeah. <laughs> they're the inspiration. Yeah. <laughs> That's awesome. Um, David, what you? Um, <clears throat> I think the very first comic strip I tried to draw because I, I loved the uh, funnies in the newspaper, um, was called Freddy the Frog. And it was basically just three panels and a, a little frog said, hi, I'm Freddy. And this little, this little bee floats up and he's like, I'm Buzzy. And then Freddy eats the frog and he says, I'm Buzzy Freddy. And that was like, and I didn't continue after that one. I, but I just thought like, well, I've actually completed a, like a comic strip. But then, um, and then I would draw a lot of, uh, I would draw a lot of um, comics inspired by my, I went over to my cousin Steve's house and he drew this comic that was like uh, Jaws. And I was just like blown away. I couldn't believe like how good it was. And like, so I was obsessed with drawing like these adventure comics based on movies I saw. Um, so they would always be inspired by those. And then um, I actually tried to do like a series, uh, like an original comic series called Philo Fixer and he was a weasel from Mars. So, um, and then I would, I would actually ink those and color them with colored pencils. Um, so I got really into that. And then various other ones, like I would always kind of create these, um, create these adventures and these worlds of uh, characters. And then I did a comic strip for, uh, when I got into junior college, I did an ongoing comic strip called The Giebersons and it was about a family so that was like an ongoing thing and that was that was a lot of fun and, and i would do political cartoons and um that sort of stuff so and then it wasn't until later that i started doing this uh, actual comic strip from mondo 2000 it was a magazine um 
so yeah, just various um, kinds various of cool comics stuff. and all that along the way. How did you come up with um, the inspiration to write your properties? Richard, how, where did Black Sand Beach come from? Or the, the, even the concept, the themes, anything you want to talk about, about the genesis of Black Sand Beach? Well, I mean, I never, I, I, I'd seen, I've been obsessed with ghosts since I was a kid. I, I really want to be one one day. Um, and I'd seen that like the first place I ever saw ghosts were at this, it was at this haunted lighthouse. And I always thought like one day I will write a story about this. And I just, I just never had, never had. And then um, I, I actually, it was because I was, I was working on Blastosaurus, uh, my, my other ongoing, like it was at the time, a monthly comic series. And uh, then I got the, a call from you saying, you know, do, do you have any series? Um, and I kind of just was like, I this might that. just be the time to do it. Um, I was spending, I was, I, was, I was building a haunted house at the time and I was just thinking a lot more about spooky stories and I was writing this um, high concept narrative thing from, for my wedding uh, about a, an alien invasion of plastic skeletons. And I was like, this is, this is the most fun I've had in a long time. And also because Blastosaurus is incredibly like it's it's set in a densely urban environment. He lives in a laundromat. I was so sick of having to rule lines um, and get like scenery identical. And I was like, we're putting it in the woods or a beach. Whatever the next <laughs> book is, it's woods or a beach where things are constantly moving and nothing has to be the same. And so it all just kind of kind of came together perfectly. And um, yeah, and then I I I think honestly, I when I when I when I pitched it. I was kind of making it up as I went along as to like that you, you said is are there more stories beyond this spooky thing with the journal and I went of course there are I, I, I think honestly I think I pitched in the room a story about a ghost of a whale who was a real jerk because I think it's really funny when whales are jerks so there you have it you know it's that you, when, when, like creativity is best when you're incredibly limited for time and you're like sure why not jerk whale <laughs> <laughs> nothing like being under fire right um david go? um repeat the question one more time sorry <laughs> I, i'm how a little you, bit of add yeah no no worries how did you come up don't we all uh how did you come up with the concept of crawl and crumple i know um you know you and your brother and Milt or, you know, kind of based on your early experiences, but like, how did you decide to create Carl and Crumple Creature Catcher? What were the uh, sort of- Well, usually, I'm, I mean, usually the ideas like start in my sketchbook, you know, if I'm drawing characters and pictures and- um, Oh yeah, I've seen early sketches of- Ideas, yeah. So it's like, um, I think the original idea was something I wrote down about, uh, I was probably watching my kids' soccer games or something with my drawing pad and um, aliens. I, I found the sentence that said like aliens from space find a fast food wrapper. And I didn't realize that after I wrote, you know, made the book and everything that I'm like, oh, it was originally like aliens. I'm like, okay. Um, and then I started drawing these little pictures of, of you know, the aliens from outer space. And and then um, I thought, well, what if they're not from outer space? What if they're from, you know, like they're sea monsters? You know, I love the concept of sea monsters. And um, I remember watching this movie when I was a kid. We probably weren't supposed to see it, but we uh, snuck in. Or, I can't remember. Like we were at this movie. We we're supposed to be seeing a Disney movie, and it was this other movie. And I think it was Conquest of the Planet of the Apes and um, playing with this movie called Lost Continent. And it was about this like ship that gets lost at sea and there's all these like sea monsters and they find this weird like civilization of these um, uh, st strange beings or characters that walked on water and like it really kind of blew my mind. I was just like, whoa, what is this thing? So, but they had this like, they had sea creatures in it. And I, I don't know, it was always kind of, uh, I thought that was a cool thing. So it became the munchies were the monsters. And then of course the posed, the posed question is what if you know, monsters ate all the fast food in the world. Um, so ideas kind of come together and then they sort of formulate and I kind of go from there. But I wrote, I wrote Munchies a long time ago. I wrote it like 10 years ago. Like I was, um, and it was just sort of sitting, I wrote it and I just, I, I wrote it and I drew it at the same time, just kind of rolled out. It wasn't like I, now I'm doing book two where I do a script and then I, you know, start doing the sketches based on the script where this one, it was just like all together. Um, 
my friend who's a writer and uh, creator, Jim James Primos, he does this book series called Johnny Mutton. And he um, was like, you, you should get into books. You should get into books. So I'm like, okay, I'll do both. And I was inspired by him to do it. So I just drew so it out I, and yeah, there so you go. I went down to the bottom of the ocean, brought up the series. <laughs> right. And so, and then, you know, when you said, you know, when you asked me if I had any, or I think it was Mary Harrington said, if you have any book ideas, send them to, you know, and that was the first one. I was just like, I've been wanting to do this one for like so long. And that was the first out of a few I had stacked up. I'm like, I'll send him this one first. Yeah, the great so. Mary Harrington is, uh, has been quite a fairy godmother to all this great talent, like Zach. So, so Zach, yeah. I, I understand. So you told us a little about Captain Dugong. Is that how sort of Dolphin Girl began? Yeah, uh, it actually kind of originated. So I had this like short film that I made in college, uh, which is like nothing to do with this at all. But there was like a commercial within the short film and it was like Captain Dugong was there at like a Chuck E. Cheese type restaurant um, in the commercial. It was like two seconds long. So then I think I just started like sketching and sketchbooks about that character and it kind of stuck with me like what is this character's world and that's sort of where that all came from. Uh, and then I did another uh, college project with him as like the lead and then um, and then I was I sort of developed it into a pitch when I moved to LA to pitch to TV networks uh, but like nobody was really nobody wanted a series about a middle-aged man fighting crime <laughs> with like kids uh, it was too weird so um, I think somebody at one point was like what if you like made the kids the main characters instead and then um, and then it just, I kind of forgot about it because I started developing other ideas and it and um yeah, when I got the opportunity to pitch some story ideas to you, uh, I think that I just kind of pulled out this old file and was like, well, are any of these old ideas, anything I would want to like revamp into a, a comic book? And I was like, well, this would be perfect. Um, and yeah, I, I sort of took out, there was like a group of kids. It was kind of like, um, like Captain Planet situation. Um, I took out the other kids and just put in uh, Dolphin Girl to start. I was like, well, we'll just make it like a father-daughter duo. And that way I can kind of play on like how it works with me and my kids. Um, I have two daughters uh, and it just sort of clicked and everything kind of fell into place there. And then, yeah, the setting is, is definitely inspired by like the Midwest Rust Belt, kind of the far-flung suburbs way away from the city a lot of strip malls, factories. There's like the big tire, which is like a thing in Detroit. It's like a giant tire. Um, yeah, it's all kind of inspired by where I grew up. Yeah, well, I love it that, you know, just to, to kind of peel back, you know, your stories and your characters and your influences and just, uh, just to, you know, hear behind the scenes about these great, these great properties. So I don't, unfortunately, know what happened to our buddy, Richard Fairgray. just texted him. Um, but uh, I just want to say um, thank you for everyone who attended. Um, I hope you, uh, I, I definitely hope you want to check out all three of these great properties. Um, and thank you to Zach and to David and to Richard uh, for joining us and spending time uh, telling us a little bit about, about yourself and your properties. And uh, this has been really great. And I hope everybody enjoyed it. I, I did. Uh, and uh, thank you. Thank you. Take care, everybody.